Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a sound test for the Blue Yeti to give you an idea of what this microphone sounds like, as well as some tips for getting it set up properly for new users. Now this entire video, as well as the last three and a half years or so worth of YouTube videos on this channel were recorded with the Blue Yeti. So this is an example of the kind of sound you can expect to get out of this microphone. This microphone is a very popular choice for podcasters and YouTube gamers. If you're looking to upgrade the sound quality of your YouTube channel or similar project from something like your headphone or laptop mic, this is an amazing step up and it's going to make you sound really professional. Having said all that, when I first got my Blue Yeti microphone, I did not sound nearly this good. Um, I was concerned that maybe I had a dud. I was hanging up blankets over my windows to minimize vibrations. I couldn't figure out why it sounded so awful. After a long period of troubleshooting, I finally managed to get it set up the way I like. And to save you that time, here are my six tips to getting the Blue Yeti set up properly to get the best sound possible out of this microphone. So before we get into specific tips, the first thing to know is that the Blue Yeti is a condenser microphone. So what that means from your perspective is that it picks up a lot of sound. Condenser microphones are known to be very sensitive. They're gonna pick up you, they're gonna pick up your keyboard, they're gonna pick up your grandmother down the hall. If you must record in a noisy environment, if you have no way to give yourself a quiet room to record in, a condenser mic might not be your best choice. You might be better off with a dynamic microphone such as the Audio-Technica ATR2100. It's in a similar price range, it's gonna offer you a comparable sound quality, and that one is better if you don't have much control over your recording space. Now, the benefit to using the more sensitive condenser microphone is because it's more sensitive, it's going to be capturing a fuller and richer sound. So you've gotten your Yeti out of the box, you've plugged it in, you've been disappointed, and you're ready to find out what to do to fix that sound. Step one is to look at the gain. The onboard gain of this microphone can be controlled with this dial on the back of the microphone. This basically controls how sensitive to sound the Yeti is and how loud the input's gonna be once you get it into your computer. So once you've found your gain knob, I want you to turn it all the way down or almost all the way down. Um, I usually turn mine all the way down as a starting point and then I turn it back up just a little tiny bit. Um, you want to experiment with that and figure out where the gain sounds good for you. Uh, more gain will give you a fuller, richer, and more sensitive sound. But if the gain is too loud, you're going to run into problems like audio peaking and oversensitivity. So I usually keep mine quite low. Too much gain is going to have your microphone picking up not only you, but that pet hamster that you thought died that's actually been living in the walls for three years. And honestly, it's just time to move on. Step two is to set it to cardioid. So beneath the gain dial, you're going to notice a modes mile and you want to turn that until you have it set to the one that looks like a heart or a little butt or a Pac-Man, depending on your point of view. The cardioid setting means the microphone is going to be focusing on picking up sound directly in front of it, which is exactly what you want for YouTube or podcasting or any situation where you're recording just your voice in front of the microphone. That means more of you and less of your keyboard. For step three, now that you've got your microphone set to cardioid, you want to make sure you're speaking into the correct part of it. The front of the microphone means the front of the microphone, right above the Blue Yeti logo. If you're speaking into the end of it like you're about to eat a hot dog, you're doing it wrong. You ideally want to have your face positioned about six to 10 inches away from the microphone and be speaking directly into it whenever you can. If your microphone's way on the other side behind your monitor, it's going to have a much harder time picking you up clearly. So you want to make sure it's pretty much right in front of your face. Step four is get it off your desk. The Blue Yeti microphone comes with this neat little desk stand. And the first thing that you want to do is get it out of that. If you have your microphone sitting on your desk, it's going to be picking up vibrations from your keyboard. It's going to be picking up vibrations from your computer. And anytime you touch the desk or move your mouse, that's all going to be translated as kind of dirty sound into your microphone. And it's going to reduce the quality of your audio. There are two main routes that you can take when you're getting your microphone off of that stand and off of your desk. The first one is the one that I'm using right here. And this is a boom stand. This is the cheaper option. Um, you can get these for about 25 bucks on Amazon, I think this is. This is an on-stage MS7701B. Um, I'm going to put Amazon links for everything I mentioned in this video in the description, so you can go check them out. But this is a very easy to set up solution that gets your microphone off your desk and reduces those vibrations. Um, the other benefit of using a boom stand is this will actually telescope all the way up. So if I want to record something while I'm standing up, which is a really good idea if you're trying to do any voice work where you don't actually have to be sitting, you can support your voice better and get a better sound out of your face standing up typically. But I really like being able to move the mic up to record while standing and then put it back down to record while sitting for something like streaming. So the price and the ability to telescope it up is the big benefit of the boom stand. Um, the big downside of the boom stand is that it's really big. This arm extends really far that way. Um, it's got this big tripod stand on the bottom. And basically back when I used to record in a smaller room, I would trip over this thing constantly. And it's not really good for your microphone to have it take face dives onto the floor. Apparently it survived, but I don't recommend it. So if you're recording in a really small space or if you're sharing space with other people, the boom stand might get in the way. But if you have a little bit more room, it's both cost effective and lets you telescope up. The other solution, which is really good if you're working with a smaller space, is the combination of a clamp arm and a shock mount. 
So the clamp arm basically just clamps onto your desk and it's got this big scissor arm, kind of like the thing that the Pixar lamp is attached to. And then your microphone attaches onto that. You can sort of adjust it around to get it in front of your face and that's all good. Um, however, that is connected to your desk. And like we mentioned before, the vibrations from your desk are something we want to keep away from your mic. And that is where the shock mount comes in. So this is an example of what a shock mount looks like. It's kind of like a torture device for your microphone that suspends it to keep it isolated from the vibrations that are going to mess up your sound. So if you do set yourself up with a clamp arm for your Blue Yeti microphone, I do recommend getting also a shock mount to go with that to make sure that you get the best sound possible. So step five, this is a very easy one and a very small one, is consider getting a pop filter. This is a pop filter, this thing right here. Typically they are a big circle with like a nylon-ish netting over it. And the purpose of that is to reduce the speed of the air from your face when you're making really fast plosive sounds like P's and T's to make those sound smoother in your final recording. It's also going to extend the lifespan of your microphone by reducing the amount that you spit into it, which generally speaking is not so good for them. If you are very creative and super broke, you can kind of makeshift a pop filter with like a metal, like some kind of a ring and then like, pantyhose, but it's going to be very ghetto and these things are not terribly expensive. And if you just spent $130 to get yourself a Blue Yeti, a pop filter is probably not really out of your reach. So don't skip this step. It's going to help you out a lot and it's going to extend the lifespan of your precious new microphone. So you've turned your gain down. You have set your Yeti to cardioid mode. You have positioned your face about six to eight inches directly in front of it and you're speaking into the front of the microphone. You've gotten it off of your desk. You've gotten the pop filter. The last step, step number six, is post-processing. Um, this means using software on your computer to clean up the sound and generally make it sound even better after you've already recorded it. The good news is that this step is completely free. Um, I use a piece of software called Audacity, which is free to download. It's available for Windows, Mac, and probably other stuff. It's an excellent way to record your audio and then touch it up after the fact. Editing your audio with Audacity can be a little bit intimidating at first, so I recommend that you just download it, play around with the effects, and then follow a couple tutorials to really get your hands around it. But it's a very worthwhile step to master, and and it's not hard once you've spent a little bit of time with it. Typically, once I've recorded my audio, I will boost my bass and treble a bit, I will run it through a compressor, and I will run it through a normalizer. And I actually have all of those things set up in a chain. So with one keybind, I can make all of those things happen in order, and then I just export my audio and I'm good to go. So to give you an example of what post-processing can do for you, here's an example of my voice coming straight from the microphone without any touching up on Audacity. So this is an example of what I sound like on the Blue Yeti microphone, straight from the microphone with no post-processing done in Audacity. And then here's what we sound like after we've taken the time to touch things up. So this is a really important step. I recommend that you don't skip it. I know it can be scary at first, but I believe in you and there are tons of helpful people on the internet that have written tutorials that are ready to walk you right through it and get you started. So those are my setup tips for the Blue Yeti microphone. Um, I strongly recommend this microphone. It is an awesome step up in quality. Anybody that's looking to improve their audio quality could do very well by getting this and it has served me valiantly for about four years. This mic retails for $129.99. Uh, you can check the Amazon links in the description or probably pin a comment with everything too. Um, to see what the current price is. If you personally have an experience with the Blue Yeti microphone, please consider sharing it in the comments so people can read through and get some other perspectives. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.